Hello all, welcome back to this course on digital systems. So in the last couple of weeks, we have been discussing about the idea of a logic gate evaluating a certain logic. Um, and we have been focusing entirely on the functionality, right? But we did not ever ask the question of how long would it take for that gate to actually evaluate that output, okay? So this might be a good juncture for us to sort of discuss that at least at some level of abstraction uh, so that we get an idea for uh, and a feel for the delay of a circuit, right? Uh, um, so uh, ultimately when we want to build, a, you know, some sort of a block that does a certain functionality, uh, how fast and how, uh, you know, how, how quickly that output evaluates is also a very important metric that will decide which implementation to pick, okay? And we'll show some of these implementations uh, by way of examples, okay? So let us consider a very simple example, okay? Let's assume that you have an implementation of an AND gate, right? Um, right now, I am not getting into the, you know, the technology aspect of whether it's easier to implement AND or NAND or whatever, right? There is some gate. And I'm going to tie off this input to uh, VDD, okay? I'm going to tie it off to VDD and I have one input A and the output Y, right? So if the one, if one of the inputs is tied to VDD for an AND gate, we obviously know that effectively this AND gate just passes the input A, right? So effectively, you will see that this is equal to A. And we have been making such statements like this, right? And in fact, if B is also present, we have just said Y equal to A and B, okay? But really the question is, does this evaluate instantaneously, okay? Now, uh, in order to understand this, we need to step back a little bit and have some abstract model of what is implemented in a certain technology, okay? Uh, maybe I, let me just deal with a NAND gate, okay? For example here, I'm going to deal with this Y equal to A bar, just for, uh, so that I am closer to technological, uh, uh, you know, the, the implementability as well. So CMOS technology uh, does allow, uh, NAND nor implementations more easily than the AND OR, right? So if you take this case, right, uh, what happens is when you place this NAND gate in a circuit, okay, let's say I have, I'm going to consider, uh, you know, some, some chain of gates like this. Right? Uh, and maybe this is driving another AND gate, okay? Some A, B, C, and I have two uh, A, B, C, let me call this, or I can call this C, and this is D, and let me drive this here, okay? So I have outputs Y1 and Y2, okay? Or uh, yes, or I have, just let me call it X and Y. I don't need the indices one and two, okay? So these are basically the, the different instances of the same NAND gate, okay? But uh, the real point here is that the, the delay or the time it takes for the out output to evaluate to a certain value, right, will be different for the different uh, instances of the same NAND gate, okay? So, so if I take this NAND gate here, effectively the way I can look at it is, there is some capacitance that is going to sit here, okay? Uh, this capacitance comes from, you know, the technology, you might be driving a wire, you might be driving, uh, you know, um, an other logic gate, you know, for example, this NAND gate, okay? N1 is driving N2 and N3, okay? This is N4, right? Whereas N2 is driving only N4, okay? 
So therefore, the input capacitance that is seen from the uh, gate that it is driving is also going to change. So for all practical purposes, let us just assume that there is some capacitance C on the output node, right? This capacitance could come from various sources, okay? And then uh, what we want to do is uh, the input is going to now rise like this from 0 to uh, let us say 5 volts, okay? And of course, when the uh, input A is 0, because it is a NAND gate, we know that the output is going to be uh, 5 volts, close to 5 volts, okay? And it will drop like this effectively, okay? So, we have really not worried about these real transitions up to this point. But if I were to plot this uh, waveform as a function of time, okay, this is my input A, this is time, okay, uh, my input is going to go like right, then my output would remain high and that would drop after some delay like this, okay. This is my Y that I am talking about in blue, okay. The black is for the input A, okay. This is for the input A and the blue is for the output Y, right. So, what happens is, first of all, the input itself has a certain rise time or a fall time. It takes some time for the input to go from logic low to logic high and the output actually takes longer after that for it to fall, okay. Therefore, if you look at the definition of delay, right, we are going to plot this line here, which is, let us say, this switch to 5 volts and this was 0 volt, we look at VDD by 2, which is 2.5 volt, okay. So, here the time it takes for the input to reach 50 percent to the time it takes for the output to fall to 50 percent of the value is what we define as delay, okay. In this case, the output is falling. So, therefore, we define this as T fall. Okay. Likewise, this delay here is the time it takes, the time it takes for the input to fall to 50 percent and the output from there on, how much time does it take for the output to rise to 50 percent. So, therefore, this is T rise. Okay. This is what happens in reality. And this is what you will see in the data sheets as well, okay. Internally, what is going to happen is you take this particular NAND gate here, okay. If, you know, for example, the input was 0, okay, the output is, is basically high, right. What does that mean? It means there is a resistor like this which is driving this capacitance to 5 volts, okay. And as long as the input A is 0, that low resistance is going to be available for the output to be pulled high, right. This we already know is basically like a low pass filter and you are applying a step input which will eventually go to uh, 5 volts and the time it takes to charge is obviously some measure of this R into C, okay. So, eventually it will charge and that is what you see here, right. Even the, uh, the, uh, uh, the output, right. Of course, we are talking of the uh, input, input being 0 and the output being high. So, we are talking of to the left of this timeline, okay. We are talking of to the left of the timeline. That means it has already settled to VDD, to 5 volts. Right. So, this resistor capacitor combination is going to sit there. Now, what happens? 
my input goes high when the input goes high we assume that uh, so therefore this capacitor right if i consider this as the t equal to t1 okay i will not say 0 minus t1 minus equal to 5 volt now input a goes high right and therefore what's going to happen the capacitor has some 5 volt uh, and a, a lower resistance path to ground will be created internally okay again this is some uh, i can say this is some r1 this is r2 into c okay so this vc of t1 minus was 5 volt and this will therefore cause a current to discharge and eventually the capacitor will simply go to zero right this is the uh, model that we can think of in an abstract manner right and internally the transistors are the ones that are causing this pull up and pull down they are the switches right and they indeed have their own resistances and therefore this is actually a very accurate model okay so the delay the t fall right is some r2 into c you can you know it may be 0.693 r2 into c it doesn't matter r2 into c is the order of magnitude and in typical technologies this is about 30 to you know 40 picoseconds again forget the number 30 to 40 it is of the order of picoseconds okay tens of picoseconds maybe 70 80 picoseconds 100 picoseconds and so on right pico is 10 power minus 12 right now what happens again um, let me consider this time instant t equal to t2 right so obviously the input has gone high the capacitor has discharged completely okay so vc of t equal to t2 minus is equal to 0 volt right as you can see the blue curve output is has gone to 0 before t equal to t2 right now the input the input falls and thereby turns on a pull up path which is a low resistance path to the supply this is 5 volt right again and this resistance is R1, right? This is the same capacitor C. So, therefore, this is another like a low pass filter which is going to charge this capacitor to the su supply voltage 5 volt eventually, right? And therefore, you will have a current in the transient period and uh, you will have the T rise some R1 into C. Again, uh, up, uh, you know. 30 to 40 picoseconds okay some some number like this right so effectively you have a rise delay you have a fall delay and uh, these two delays can be different okay there's nothing sacrosanct about it it, it need not be the same uh, and like i also told you it depends on the capacitance and therefore once you give me a circuit and fix you know what that gate is driving what the input is and all that then i can tell you that the delay for that particular instance of the gate is fixed right i cannot tell you that the nand 2 gate has a rise delay of some 40 picoseconds because that if i change the output capacitance obviously the r into c is going to change and thereby i will have a different uh, number right mm -hmm.